Welcome back folks to a guide on how armor works in Pathfinder 2e. I'm Frizz and today I'm going to be covering everything about basic armor in Pathfinder 2e, though I will be saving talking about runes until the next video since there are a ton of different property runes and going over those would take up a bit too much of the time that I have to actually make this video in the first place. Armor is one of the things that basically every single character needs to have at least some understanding of to survive in combat, but thankfully it isn't all that complicated. So let's just jump right into things. At its very simplest, armor is, you know, very, very simple. It is literally anything that you are wearing to provide your self-protection. There are four different types of armor. There's light armor, which is generally going to be leather, or cloth, or just lighter stuff that doesn't limit your movement. Heavy armor, which really restricts your movement, but is really, really hard to break through and provides you a lot of protection. Medium armor, which is, you know, halfway between light and heavy armor. And then the last option is not wearing anything to protect yourself, which is being unarmored and uses your unarmed defense proficiency. Obviously, that last option isn't as good as wearing armor unless you're a monk or unless you have a very, very high dexterity, which is going to be a little bit unlikely for a spellcaster. But you can make it work. It takes one minute to put on light armor, and five minutes to put on medium or heavy armor, and it takes one minute to take it off. Taking it off isn't very likely to be very time-sensitive in most situations, but putting on armor can be a bit of an important situation, because you cannot rest in any armor. Otherwise, you become fatigued whenever you wake up, and fatigued is not a condition you want to have. So, if you get jumped in the middle of the night and you normally wear heavy or medium or even light armor, then you won't be wearing your armor, which is really, really unfortunate. Rather than covering every single type of armor individually, I will instead be covering all the different statistics that are linked to armor. So this will allow you to generally look at armor and be able to determine whether or not it's right for your character. Because generally, yeah, the only thing that differentiates armor is these statistics which I'm going to be talking about. The only exception is Hell Knight Plate, which is basically just full plate, but it gives you a bonus on intimidation. So. Obviously that's good, but you may not want to be associated with Elmites because they are uh, a very aggressive and militant organization. So yeah, you get access to it if you're a Hell Knight, but otherwise you might want to stick a little bit clear. But let's move on to those statistics that I talked about. First, and maybe most importantly, the item bonus that armor gives to your armor class, since the way the AC is calculated is 10 plus your proficiency modifier for the armor that you're wearing plus the item bonus to your armor that your armor grants, which is this statistic, and then plus the dexterity of your character, but capped by your armor. So this is a very integral part of determining what your AC is. It generally ranges from one to six, but better doesn't necessarily mean better, because your dexterity cap matters just as much as this bonus, as it will really depend on what your AC ends up being. Speaking of which, the dex cap is the maximum bonus that your dexterity can give to your AC, and your armor determines it. It generally will limit your dexterity between 5 and 0, and it will generally line up with the armor to protect you. So the higher your dex cap on your armor is, the lower the actual bonus that your armor will give you. So as long as you meet the dex cap of your armor, you're going to be in a pretty good place AC-wise. It's also important to recognize, because I've met some people who didn't realize this, that the dex cap only applies to determining your AC, so it won't impact any of your other skills or apply to, say, ranged attack rules. This is purely to your AC, not to any other place where you use dexterity. The next important statistic for armor is the strength score that is required to wear it effectively. Basically, armor is really heavy, and especially as you get to the heavier and medium sorts of armors, where it is genuinely just super heavy, so if you're not a very strong person, you might be a little weak at carrying it around. It, this is generally going to range from 10 to 18, and it can be managed. But if you don't meet it, then you are going to be taking some penalties. The first of the two penalties is the check penalty. 
This will range from a minus 1 to a minus 3, and if you don't meet the strength requirement for the armor, then you take that penalty to all of your strength and dexterity based skill checks, unless they are attacks. So you can still trip people just fine using athletics because that is an attack roll, but you cannot climb as well because that is not an attack roll. This is obviously terrible considering how penalties greatly reduce your effectiveness just due to how the map works in Pathfinder, but thankfully if you do meet the strength requirements then you don't take any penalties at all. The other penalty associated with not being swole enough for your armor is a speed penalty. Armor is incredibly heavy like I said earlier, so if you aren't strong enough then it can slow you down and make you a little bit clumsier. If you aren't strong enough for your armor, then you get slowed down by the amount lit that is listed, which is going to range from minus 5 feet to minus 10 feet. Minus 5 feet for being for medium armor, and minus 10 feet being for heavy armor. If you do meet the strength penalty, then you reduce that penalty by 5 feet. So basically, for medium armor, you do not take a penalty to your speed at all if you meet the strength requirement, but for heavy armor, you always take a minus 5, even if you do get the strength penalty. The last statistic for armor is its bulk. Armor can obviously be pretty bulky, and it works exactly the same as normal bulk, where you have a certain amount of encumbrance and all that. But the only difference is that armor is designed to be worn, so it is substantially less bulky in a way whenever you're wearing it, because it is less bulky and it's designed to be used that way. This means that whenever you're carrying armor, but you're not wearing it, you increase the bulk that is listed in the stat block by one. So if it's normally a four bulk armor, if you're just carrying it around in a backpack, that means it's a five bulk item, which is really, really high. But generally, it's not going to be that big of a problem if you're wearing it. One of the last things to talk about with armor is its group, and yeah, Armor, just like weapons, are suited with a particular group, and this matters for some abilities, but it mainly matters for armor specialization, which some classes will get access to. Like, I know that fighters, champions, and inventors can all gain access to it, and it gives you some additional defensive abilities based on the armor that you're wearing, but only for medium and heavy armors, which is why some classes just don't get access to it. For example, swashbucklers and monks don't care about armor specialization because they only wear light armor or no armor at all. So basically, some abilities will change depending on the armor that you're wearing, but they're all pretty good, so let's just talk about them. Chain armor is incredibly flexible, so if you're good enough with it, you can give in to some critical hits to reduce some of their damage. You reduce the damage from critical hits by four if it's medium armor, and 6 if it's heavy armor, and then you add the bonus for your potency rune on your armor to the damage reduced. So basically, 6 plus your potency rune, or 4 plus your potency rune depending on your armor. This is all pretty alright, since you're going to be crit occasionally, and it affects all crits. But planning about being crit isn't always the best idea. It is nice insurance, though. Cloth armor is nice and simple, because there is no specialization effect for it. There is no medium or heavy cloth armor, so Paizo didn't bother making a specialization effect that would never come into play. Composite armor is made up of a bunch of overlapping segments that help stop you from being stabbed. You get resistance to piercing damage equal to 1 for medium armor or 2 for heavy armor. And then you add the bonus from your potency rune, so you know it's 1 plus the potency rune or 2 plus the potency rune depending on what you're wearing. This is fantastic since piercing damage is one of the most common damage types that you're going to be running into, and most ranged attacks are going to be piercing, so this resistance is going to be coming up a lot. Leather armor works pretty similar to composite armor, where the leather helps disperse any bludgeoning damage. You gain constant resistance to bludgeoning damage equal to 1 plus the proficiency modifier for medium armor and 2 plus the proficiency modifier for heavy armor. Then, you know, you are a lot more resistant to bludgeoning damage. Just as with composite armor, this is a very common damage type to run into, so resistance is going to be great. Plate is the last type of armor, and follows the simple principle of being really hard to cut since you're covered in metal. As you might have guessed at this point, if you have the specialization for armor and you're wearing plate armor, 
you gain resistance to slashing damage equal to one plus your potency modifier for medium armor and two plus your potency modifier for heavy armor. This is obviously good. And I'm mentioning it here because it's the last option that this is amazing only if you do not have another source of resistance to these damage types. For example, if you are a barbarian and you get resistance. But otherwise, this is amazing, since it's a resistance against a very, very common damage type. The final basic elements of armor that I wanted to talk about are their traits. Just like weapons, armor has traits that change a bit how they work. But, you know, there are a huge, huge amount of weapon traits, but there's only four very simple armor traits, so let's just go over them pretty quickly. The Bulwark trait is great for characters that are wearing full plate, but still want to have a decent reflex save despite having low dexterity. In case you didn't know, full plate has a dexterity cap of zero, so you probably aren't going to have a very good dexterity if you're building your character around wearing full plate, so Bulwark can help you a bit. While you're wearing armor with Bulwark, which is full plate or hell knight plate, you get a plus three bonus instead of your dexterity modifier on reflex saves, but only versus damaging effects. This is very good, because if you're wearing full plate, plus three is almost certainly going to be higher than your dexterity modifier, so this is a really good bonus to your defenses, especially since it is in a place where you probably need that help. The comfort trait is rather niche, but it does have its uses. As I said earlier, whenever you rest without taking off your armor, you become fatigued. But comfort armor is the exception, because it is cozy enough to sleep in. Unfortunately, it is only on two types of armor, which is explorer's clothing and padded armor. But that does mean that you will be able to have some armor on whenever you're sleeping. For most characters, that means that buying a set of padded leather will help out, because you can sleep in it and still get an armor bonus, but padded armor is one of the worst armors in the entire game. So, building around this is maybe not great, but it's good for sleeping in. The flexible trait is actually pretty nice, since it means that if you don't actually meet the strength requirement for your armor, you don't take the armor's check penalty to acrobatics and athletics checks, due to it being super flexible and not limiting your mobility. This is, not, is pretty nice and all, but most characters are going to be using armor for which they're strong enough, because there are enough options for armor that you can generally choose one that you're going to be strong enough for. If you didn't end up choosing armor that you're strong enough for, though, this is great. While the flexible trait is great, the noisy trait is objectively a downside. No matter what your strength score is, if you're wearing armor with the noisy trait, then you always apply the check penalty on stealth checks, since the armor rattles around as you move, which is generally inadvisable for moving around quietly. Interestingly enough, the flexible and noisy traits are always a linked pair, meaning that they always appear together and they only actually appear on chain shirts and chain mail, since those are flexible and noisy armors. So if you're planning on using these armors, you're going to be better at being acrobatic and athletic if you don't meet the armor's requirements, but you're always going to be worse at sneaking. Now I hear you ask, what does this actually mean and how do you anyone pick their actual armors. Well, if you look at the different types of armor, there are certain trends that start appearing. First, light armor has low bonuses to its AC while still having a high dexterity cap, while the inverse is true for heavy armor. Also, thanks to the surprise of nobody, you have to be strong to use heavy armor to its fullest because it's heavy. So generally, what matters most whenever you're choosing what armor you want to wear is your dexterity modifier and what you are proficient in. You should never be using armor that you aren't proficient in, because then you don't have a proficiency modifier and you're going to get crit every single attack. But generally dexterity is the best way to find your armor once you know what you can actually wear. One of the choices that Paizo made whenever they were making Pathfinder 2e is that characters of the same level and proficiency will probably have the same AC if they're wearing light or medium armor so long as they meet the dexterity cap for their armor. Take for example, leather armor and hide armor. 
Leather armor is a light armor that has a plus one AC bonus, but a plus four dexterity cap. So if you meet the dexterity cap, and then you'll get a total of a plus five bonus to your AC from your armor. And then you add your proficiency and yada yada, all that stuff. If you are wearing hide armor and you're proficient in it, then if you meet its dexterity cap of plus two, then you add two to your AC, and then you add three from the armor, with a total of a plus five, meaning that they are basically equivalent for the purposes of determining your AC. This is an intentional decision that holds true for every single unarmored and light armor and medium armor in the entire game. If you have the same proficiency modifier and you meet the dexterity cap, you will have the expected AC for a character of your level. So please try and meet the dexterity cap for your armor if you think that you're going to get attacked a lot. It doesn't matter as much for a spellcaster who's going to be in the back, or a archer or backline person, but if you're going to be up front and you're going to get attacked, please meet the dexterity cap for your armor, or otherwise you're going to get crit and hit a lot more. Now, you might have noticed in the point that I just made that I was specifically calling out light and medium armor, but I wasn't talking about heavy armor, because heavy armor is a little bit different. If you combine the armor's item bonus to AC and their dexterity cap, heavy armor gives a total of a plus six to your AC, where if you combine dexterity cap and the item bonus for light and medium armor, you get a plus five, meaning that heavy armor is legitimately just better than light and medium armor. But if you, that's only if you hit the strength cap, because otherwise you take pretty terrible penalties to all of your dexterity and strength based skill checks, and you are much, much slower. Even if you do meet the strength requirement, you are still going to be a little bit slower than other characters. So heavy armor is better, but it has more severe downsides than the other types of armor. Overall, I really like how armor works in Tui. It's nice and unobtrusive, and it creates pretty simple archetypes that work great. If you have a character with high dex, light armor works just fine. But if their dex isn't as high, medium armor works just as well. If you're fortunate enough to be trained in heavy armor, then it's absolutely the best armor in the game, even if you deal with a couple of penalties, but the choice for what armor you want to wear is never all that complicated or even game-breaking. If you can't meet the dexterity cap for some medium armor, then yeah, you'll be a little bit more likely to be hit. But once you hit, say, level 5 or 10 or somewhere where you get ability boosts, you can probably boost up your dexterity to the point where you could make it work. It's a very flexible system, and pretty simple to grasp, so really you can make different types of characters and you can have a lot of fun with it. Also, if you're ever unarmored for any reason, then it's not nearly as good, but it can still make it work, especially for monks. But you still have to get a good dexterity to make up for not having any armor to help you out. But basically, you can make it work, and I like that this system has the capability for making all these different types of characters work fantastic. Also, in case you're interested in heavy armor but your class doesn't give you proficiency in it, the champion dedication and the sentinel archetype are the best ways to get proficiency in, in heavy armor if your class doesn't give it to you. So you can take those if you really want to wear heavy armor but your class doesn't give you that ability normally. Thanks for watching this video. Armor is a really interesting and important element of the game system, so I've been looking forward to covering it for a while now. If you enjoyed this video, then liking and subscribing are the best way to tell YouTube that, you know, you're interested in seeing more of this, which will include the second part of this where I'm going over the property rooms that are also pretty important for armor. Also, if you have any constructive feedback, or really literally anything to say, then I would be happy to see it down below in a comment. Any kind of engagement is nice, and I read every single comment that I get. Anyway, until I see you next, live a wonderful life.